Yo, what's up chefs? In case you haven't heard, Dungeonborn is having a massive update on the 29th, including things like a redefined matchmaking system that focuses on fixed gear brackets, the removal of the legendary drop global cooldown, the removal of mithril dice, an all new map structure with improved risk to reward ratios, and much more. If you're trying to check out the official patch notes for yourself, I'll leave a link to their Discord down below. Otherwise, I'm going to take a deep dive into some of the most important slash notable changes from my perspective, so let's hop into it. First things first, as the developers so graciously put it, no more BS matchmaking. As I'm sure many of you are aware, the previous matchmaking system definitely had a shortage in clarity and defined or fixed gear brackets. This oftentimes resulted in two players in any given lobby having a pretty large gear disparity between them. Um, in the most extreme cases, you might even see somebody in greys, greens, and heirlooms going up against somebody in full exceptionals and a mithrodiced legendary weapon, just as an example. Unfortunately, this led to a lot of people being pretty dissatisfied with the matchmaking system that was previously being used, and a lot of the changes they've made are specifically focused on fixing that issue. Um, the main one, as an example, that I'll go over real quick is the allowed item rarity in the new three difficulties that you can queue into. Previously, it was just casual, classic. Now we have casual, classic, and hard. And each of these difficulties have a minimum and a maximum gear quality that you can bring into the raid. As an example for casual, Clusau Castle, we've got dark gray and gray. This would probably be like junk and poor item quality that you can come in with. On the flip side, you've got hard Clusau Castle, same map, different difficulty. And the minimum quality you can enter with is epics and the maximum is unique. Essentially, the point here is that you could not queue into a match with greens, grays, blues, whatever you want, and find yourself against people with legendaries. The only way you're going to find yourself in a lobby against people with legendaries is if you are queuing on the hardest difficulty, which will be very clear to you before you get into a game. Definitely a very solid change and certainly a step in the right direction. Up next, we have what I would classify as a mini revamp to the reward structures within the game. Ultimately, this is going to be a lot of changes and modifications to the reward systems coming with this patch, all the way from removing the poison circle in the casual mode to removing static extracts in classic and hard difficulties, as well as differentiating the power of the monsters in each of the three difficulties. It's also supposed to be an overhaul of the placement, distribution, and number of monsters in each difficulty. Um, all of those things seem pretty well tailored to making sure that the quality of the gear you're bringing in is commensurate with the difficulty of the PvE that you have to deal with in each mode. Um, in addition to that though, the number one most important change for me, and I think a lot of people are going to be excited for, is the fact that legendaries are no, are no longer going to be on a global cooldown. For those of you that don't know, the previous system made it so that if I was in a match and the legendary crossbow gale flight dropped for me or my group, that nobody else playing the game would be able to get that same drop for another 24 to 48 hours. And this typically made it to where nobody was getting legendaries except for a small group of people that were tracking this information on the side and they knew precisely when to get on and kill the boss to get certain legendaries and then nobody else was able to get that same experience. Primary issue with, with this is it made doing end game PvE content like the Shadow Monarch boss and the Wendigo boss pretty pointless because you knew that you had a you know negligible chance whatsoever to actually get a very rare item. So definitely making this change was very needed and I'm glad that they decided to do it. In addition to that, or in addition to that and the other things I already mentioned, they are also adding some new treasures into the game as you can see here. Most of these are going to be obtained with new systems, um, new things that you can do during the adventure or during the raid, whatever you want to call it. Uh, such as interacting with some leyline seals and some things that we'll touch on briefly later in the video. The only other thing I would quickly touch on is that they have also made note of the fact that they're rebalancing the loot distribution between monsters, 
chests and elite monsters. Um, the goal with that is to decrease the quality of items and quantity of items that you get from just regular monsters around the map and ultimately increase the quality and rarity of items that you're getting from elite chests and elite monsters which should hopefully bring players together in a more organic way for good pvp with good rewards so definitely think these changes are pretty good when it comes to the reward structures following that we have the all new map layout system i would say it's pretty innovative i've never seen anything quite like it before Ultimately though, there is a lot of information to go along with this one, so I'm not going to touch on every detail, rather I'm going to give more of a TLDR. So the first thing you need to know is that each room or tile, however you want to phrase it, is going to be assigned a level from 1 to 4, or it's going to be an elite room, we'll touch on that in just a second. The outer edge of the map or the outer tiles are all going to be either level 1, elite, or a possible spawn so as you can see here i'll try and zoom in just a little bit we've got one or elite and then we've got a possible spawn one or elite possible spawn so the edge is going to be relatively easy and then as you go in towards the center of the map the difficulty of the rooms is expected to increase you get two or four you get three and you get another two or four so ultimately each of these two or fours can either be a level two or a level four same with the one or elite and that's going to determine what you would actually find in the room. As an example, in the level four rooms, these are going to have the highest rewards. But in addition to that, they're going to contain an altar. An altar is a new mechanic that's being added in with the patch. You have to collect 10 of these little stones that are scattered around the map. You can then use those stones to unlock the altar and receive some pretty banging rewards. Obviously, I think the intended goal here is to create different routes and ideas for play or different play styles for that matter. And, you know, they have some example routes that they show here. You know, one keeps you on the edge of the map, provides a safer experience with a lower payout, less return, but less risk. Then you've got the more risky option, which sends you in towards the middle of the map and is ultimately going to provide a much higher payout but your likelihood of extracting should be that much lower as well. Finally, this is going to be the last notable major change from my perspective. It's going to be the Clusal Castle map getting redesigned. Um, this is something I'm particularly excited about. On the surface, it doesn't seem like too, too much to write home about, but those of you that played the game quite a bit probably are excited about this as well. And ultimately, the main reason for that, um, any of you that weren't aware or didn't experience this, count yourself lucky. But a lot of the higher gear bracket Clusout Castle matches oftentimes got decided by who was able to cleanly get control of the Cyclops stairs. At least that's what my group liked to call it. Uh, it was the stairs that led up to the Cyclops, uh, you know, boss arena. And from that position, you could see pretty much the whole map. There was only one way up, which was those stairs. If anybody ever tried to walk up the stairs while you're up there, you had an extremely large advantage in the fight against them. And this was pretty problematic. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was pretty bad. Um, a lot of the PvP on that map would take place in the castle directly below the Cyclops or right out front of the Cyclops arena, um, or out in front of it. And the problem that this caused is that whichever team was up top would always have the priority on being able to get the perfect third party on these other fights that were taking place. The other teams that weren't in the good position up on Cyclops typically started to realize this pretty quickly, and this resulted in very little good PvP ever taking place on the Clusau Castle map except for these like exterior regions up in the top left top right bottom right sometimes you got some good pvp but pretty much if you were like anywhere in this area it was always kind of a pain in the ass for lack of better words because you knew if you took a fight there was a good chance that the team from cyclops stairs was just going to come third party you and ruin your day so that, you know, resulted in a lot of teams just being afraid to PvP and a lot of the matches just being like a standoff. You would literally have 
four teams in a very small area and they're just all looking at each other. They're just looking and doing nothing because they know the first one to make a move is going to be screwed over. So um, one of the things they have made a change or one of the things they've changed to counteract this is they've added new ways to get up to the top of Cyclops. So there should be additional ways for teams to actually get up there and, you know, make an opportunity to get that position themselves. But more importantly, just prevent one team from getting up there and holding it for the rest of the map because no one has the ability to actually contest them. In addition to the Cyclops stairs being no longer the only way up to Cyclops, there are a number of other zones on the map that they have, you know, highlighted here as getting changes. One, you can even see right here, there's going to be a new path that leads you from the top of the map to the middle. It's definitely a good change. I'm curious to see what they're doing about these other areas because, you know, the way they've described it is that these choke points are frustration areas for a large portion of their player base, which is certainly true. So their goal is just to make them less frustrating. Um, the Cyclops stair one is pretty self-explanatory, but I am curious to see what they do for these other areas. Lastly, I do just want to add that there are some additional changes coming with the patch that I didn't go over in this video, such as the removal slash replacement of the Mithril Dice system with the new insurance system. And there's also some additional details on some of the things that I did cover, but you can find all of that information in their official patch notes, which like I said in the intro, I'll be leaving a link to their discord down below where you can find all of that info. With that being said, I can say I'm pretty excited to hop back into the game on the 29th and actually test out all of these changes for myself. So I hope to see you guys playing it as well. I'll catch you around. Later, chefs. And last but not least, take it easy, chefs. Your blue eyes fade to gray.